Welcome everyone to the Bet US NBA Pick Show. I'm Sean stagging the money green with my boy Shark and Noops here on a Thursday. Talking a little NBA. We got the Masters uh teeing off. Uh interesting day in the sports world, to say the least. Uh some breaking news there. OJ Simpson uh, passed away. A uh, very uh very interesting start to the sports uh day. But hey, we got an interesting spot last night. I mean, uh <laughs> not I mean, uh, I was Owen two. didn't feel good about it. I mean, uh, just kind of a wonky night We're we're trying to stay locked in here, trying to figure out the motivation, these big spreads, uh, just kind of a wonky week here to close things out as we get ready for the playoffs. But we got some plays, we got a five game slate. We'll figure it out. Noobs. How are we doing? Yeah, it's, uh, I guess I'll just start with the juice no longer on the loose. That's really just a shame. Yeah. Say what you will about him. I have enjoyed his random, bizarre social media presence the last few years. I love hearing about his fantasy football league, and I assume those guys are just so terrified of him. They let him win anyway. It's just, I'll miss that a little bit. But again, a lot to unpack there, and a lot to unpack at the end of the year. And I hate to sort of explain why it's this is so tough blah, 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 blah. but uh, this time of season man we got we got our clocks clean yesterday the last couple right. weeks have been tough and it's one of those things where i love doing the show and i would never give you guys a bet i didn't think was a good bet but maybe so some of these games i would maybe stay away from <laughs> well yeah and, and uh luckily for me personally what saved it was i did get on the uh, conley over 10 and a half points uh parlayed it with the mamu uh rebounds uh courtesy of one of the listeners hit us up well on done robert yeah thank you robert uh that was my one winner of the night and kind of bailed me out from the uh, other losers so again and you know not that uh not that it helps my record but um, the stuff we discussed in the chat about, hey, uh, maybe get on Hornets money line there. I, I feel like we did pretty good with answering the questions. Of course, I didn't play any of the, As always. <laughs> any of the stuff minus the Connolly uh, thing, which was one of Noops' plays as well. So, again, uh, hopefully, chat was able to take our advice and use it for positive. Uh, Shark, how are we feeling here on a thirsty Thursday? Feeling great. Great to be back. I feel like it's been a, almost a week here. As you guys mentioned, uh, late season, a lot of ambiguity, moving parts, certain rosters, really G League quality at this point. And a lot of teams in these log jams, Eastern and Western Conference teams right around each other. A lot of motivation tonight, as you as you guys mentioned yesterday, it was a bit of a tough card in some spots. Trey Young comes back. The Hawks lose, of course. And on and on we go. But, Sean, great to be here with you guys. Let's talk about it. Let's get in there. Yes. And then the uh, Bucks beating the Magic without Giannis. Uh, it's just, uh, it's bonkers. But hey, this it's is April the NBA. basketball. It's April <laughs> this basketball. Is, this is why it's fun. Um, so let's get into it. We'll take a quick look at the record book again. As Noobs highlighted, we kind of got uh, shoved into a locker. Still above 500 by 10 games, holding on to that with the thread. Uh, Noobs, though, still 16 games above 500. Shout out to you, Noobs. And uh, we're looking to add some dubs in the winning column here. Let's get to it. We got first game Chicago Bulls at the Detroit Pistons right now. Bulls laying nine and a half at the Pistons. Uh, Pistons plus 340 on the money line. Total sitting at 220 and a half. Uh, this game, you know, kind of interesting, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the bulls should win this, um, should, should take care of business here. I don't know. I guess I'm a little skeptical of the bulls being this big of a road favorite, even though it is the pistons. Uh, I couldn't get anything good to anything side or total, but, uh, how say you noobs? Yeah, I'll just kind of rip the bandit off here. I don't have any full game looks today. We've got five games, four of them. I can't even begin to explain to you what's going to happen in the last one. The books lined absolutely perfectly. But uh, in this particular game, I agree. Chicago has been pushing hard regardless of, of what their situation is. They are in a bit of a fight with Atlanta. They kind of need to win one more game, I think maybe even two, to lock up that nine seed and have home court advantage in the play-in tournament. Uh, I don't know if it's because Billy Donovan knows he's not going to be here next year and doesn't care. He is running these guys into the ground. Yeah. Um, DeMar DeRozan's been playing 40 minutes a game for like a month. 
month at this point. Um, just unbelievable what he's doing. So uh, well, I looked at this. There's a couple player props I really liked here. Um, Alex Caruso is back tonight. He is available after missing the last couple games. His points, rebounds, and assist total sits at 19 and a half. I had this closer to 25. He's done a really nice job filling the stat sheet again, assist, rebounds, and that's really where I have this a lot of the strength in. The points total again looks too low. Wrapping up all together, I like Caruso over 19 and a half rebounds quite a bit. And the aforementioned DeRozan, I would think a veteran player at this time of the year would be looking at less minutes. He's playing more minutes than he has all season, and it's kind of taken over a little bit of a point forward role here. We've seen Kobe White a little more off ball with DeRozan on. Same thing with Ayo DeSunmo. Uh, DeRozan's rebound and assist total only nine and a half. I had that closer to 12, almost 13. Uh, again, playing kind of like a point power forward role where he has the ball on offense. He is kind of the, the four, the four, the playing some of the bigger guys close to the basket rebounding. So just two player props for me. And it's kind of going to be the theme of the day. Yeah. And I, and I would imagine polls fairly motivated, you know, uh, with that, uh, the play in tournament standing there at the end of the Eastern conference. So I, I imagine you'll see uh, a decent effort. And to your point, like they're playing a bunch of minutes. So I, I would be surprised if they take the foot off the gas at all uh, during this game. Shark, any thoughts, bulls, pistons. Yeah, I would lean towards the bulls side here. Uh, as you guys mentioned, Detroit, like absolutely nothing to play for in Chicago. You can make an argument. It's not that important because they've actually been better on the road in the last two months. So do they want to go to Atlanta for this game? Maybe. Uh, for whatever reason, they don't seem to like to play at the United Center. But I agree with those over props because uh, the last time these teams played in Chicago, uh, speaking of Chicago being horrible at home, Detroit did get them 105 to 95. Really historically awful shooting from the Bulls. A two for 29 from the three point line that, uh, that day. That's 6.9%. I believe that's probably the worst. Uh, result if you over 25 three three balls in a game this year I, I would imagine nobody shot worse I could be wrong but I'm look uh, that up. I don't know but anyway I think Caruso will be obviously shooting some threes tonight DeRozan as well probably get one or two and uh, this is also just a brutal spot for Detroit uh, the league did them did them no favors here in their final home game <clears throat> this is a home one-off coming off a trip and they go right back on the road tomorrow night front end back to back and you know we've been backing them this year uh, sporadically intermittently They've been pretty good this year against the spread, but I think the key point was Cade Cunningham was really propping them up. He's not playing anymore to close the season. And this team is 4-10 and 10 ATS last 14. Uh, the revenge game is there. The dynamic is there. Chicago better on the road. Numbers are very heavy. I would lean towards Chicago if I had a free play, but don't love this game by any stretch. Yeah, lag it up for noops on Caruso over 19 and a half PRA and DeMar DeRozan over 9 and a half rebounds and assists. Next up, we got the New York Knicks versus the Boston Celtics. Uh, Knicks laying two and a half in Boston. Celtics plus 120 on the money line. Total sitting at 214 and a half. And it does seem like uh, the Celtics don't have anything to play for. Knicks always uh, come out pretty scrappy. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, Knicks win this outright, get the cover. I don't know. I, I don't know what was holding me back. Uh, from go from really hammering the Knicks, but um, I certainly understand the case, and maybe even uh, Knicks first quarter. They've done pretty well in the first quarter as of late. That could be interesting as well. And I was uh, buying time here a little bit to pull up the injury report. All these guys are listed as quote day to day for the Celtics: Drew Holiday, Xavier Tillman, Al Horford, Chris Tapps, Porzingis, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum. So essentially, their entire roster is day to day. Uh, I don't know about the star removal theory when you take away all the stars. So um, we'll see. It, it seems to be setting up for a good spot for the Knicks. You got the Knicks hat on shark. Why do you like the Knicks? I do. I do. Top play of the board by hat engaged Knicks on the money line minus 140. Uh, and <clears throat> John, you said it. This is just a massive, massive motivational gap here. Boston has absolutely nothing to play for. And you could argue, truthfully, they should just rest their players because if anybody got injured, that would be such a disaster for this team sitting 14 games ahead of the whole conference. Talk about neutralizing yourself in really an unnecessary spot. And the Knicks are in the final game of the of their road calendar this year, coming off of two very impressive wins at Milwaukee and Chicago. And there's only three and a, or uh, three games, three and a half games, excuse me, separating the three and the eight seeds. So every one of these games is a must win. The Knicks want that three seed. 
They want to play Indiana in the first round. Indiana is much softer than some of these other opponents for the Knicks. Not only that, if they get this position, they get better uh, positioning in round two. And something that I found last night to be very interesting, this is the fifth matchup of the year between these two teams because they played in the in-season tournament for an additional matchup. First time, I believe, in league history, we're seeing five matchups in the regular season between teams like this. Boston is 4-0 and ATS and straight up. So you talk about sweeping four, try five. Incredibly, incredibly difficult. Knicks will have peak motivation not to get swept in this spot tonight. And you talk about the line very briefly. Last two times the Knicks played in uh, Boston, November 13th and December 8th. Boston minus 9.5 cover. Boston minus 7.5 cover. This comes all the way down to four at open. Steamed across now to a favorite. It's all over the Knicks in every capacity tonight. By far the best spot on the board. Money line minus 140, one unit. Uh, let's go. Yeah. Shapeshifter in the chat, uh, uh, encouraging everyone to like the show. Always appreciate that. Smash the subscribe button and, uh, man, Drake falls. See him, uh, in the chat as well. He, you know him. He's a diehard Celtics fan. And we actually did some digging. We're like, man, Drake falls. Where is that? And, uh, looked it up. It was a fictitious town in uh, big daddy. So man, Drake falls. Your cover is blown. We know you're a uh, big Sandler fan. So uh, shout out to you, man, Drake uh, noobs. Any thoughts here on this uh, Knicks Celtics game? Yeah, real shout out for Mandrake. He gets to be fan of the day because he chased a bear away before he had to run in and come watch the show. Oh, so right. he's thinking about the show while he's trying to fight bears in the woods in Vermont. <laughs> it's Really astounding work by you, Mandrake. We're always happy to have you here. I don't know what to do with this game. We have no idea who's playing for Boston. As much as they should rest everybody, they've been playing guys. You go back and look, they kind of pick yeah. two or three of them. They roll out and play. Missoula wants to keep these guys fresh and try some stuff. Uh, with just two or three of their best players, the Celtics could be good enough to beat the Knicks. And again, this is a long-time rivalry. Maybe Boston just kind of wants to mess with the Knicks here and keep them from getting that two seed. I don't really have any idea what anybody wants to do in this game. I think, again, it's Knicks or pass here. I just have no clue what to do. And if, again, Boston has even two or three of their guys, I could still make a case Boston should be a short favorite. If everybody's out, I mean, it's going to be Knicks. This will close Knicks minus 10 or something like that. So uh, I think Sharks definitely on the right side. I'm just going to let this one go. There's too much uh, that I have no idea about. <laughs> yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Something's scaring me a little bit, but certainly a strong case for the Knicks. So lag it up for shark on the Knicks uh, minus two and a half money line, whatever you can get there. Knicks money line officially uh, next up. We got the Houston Rockets versus the Utah jazz. I don't like taking big road favorites. I don't like da- laying double digits, but uh, I feel like I got to here. The Rockets laying 10 and a half jazz plus three forty on the money line total sitting at two twenty seven and a half. Uh, was kind of going back and forth on how the Rockets would finish. I was surprised at how motivated and how well they played uh, against the Magic there. So, uh, nice win by them. Uh, you know, Houston is nothing to play for, but again, they're certainly playing hard. Ime, I think, wants to finish the season on a high note. Um, doesn't really like losing doesn't really help them much with the draft. Jazz seem to have just completely punted the season. I mean, post. Uh, trade deadline. They've just been kind of a dead team. Zero and ten uh, straight up. Last ten games, two and eight ATS. Their last ten. They're seven and thirty. The last thirty-seven games. You know, we talk about some of these other dog teams, but I feel like the Jazz are kind of under the radar for how bad they've been this entire second half of the season. Uh, it's been pretty rough. I think the Rockets come in. They're motivated, and yeah, they they've had some issues defensively, but I don't know if this Jazz team um, can take advantage. So. It's chalky as hell, but give me the Rockets laying the big number at minus 10 and a half. Shark, any thoughts? Rockets, Jazz. I agree with you. And unfortunately, this number overnight was minus three and a half. So you talk <laughs> about movement. I opened up the score sheet at 11 in the morning, Eastern time here, and I said, what just happened in this game? But I think you're telling the right story here, Sean, because I think when you look at this, obviously, neither team can go to the playoffs. So it really comes down to the motivation of the game. And as you mentioned, the Jazz are completely tanking. I think I said this last week, but the Jazz and the Raptors are pretty much the same yeah. team. Had a reasonable roster midseason, were fairly competitive, gutted the roster, and now we're just throwing out really a fledgling G League kind of tryout roster uh, to close the season. And I think Houston does care. I mean, we kind of thought maybe they didn't after they lost a few in a row, 
But then they played a great game at Dallas, went to overtime, actually did not cover a really gross beat uh, over the weekend in Dallas. Uh, and then they hammered Orlando. So they played back-to-back -back very competitive games. They've been very competitive ever since Sangoon went down. They're right around 500. And that brings me to really the core point of this. I think Ime Yudoka is a great motivator. I think he's in their mind. Guys, let's finish this season over 500. This is a huge win for us. You know, we come from really a low point the last few years after they gutted that previous group with James Harden. Get over 500. That's that's like winning the championship for this team this year in their mind. Create momentum going into the offseason. I think they will get Steven Adams back next year. Uh, Tari Eason's coming back. They're going to be loaded early next season. We're going to bet them a lot. And I think, Sean, you're betting them correctly tonight. I think the other side, let's get it. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Rockets are going to be a fun team uh, next year. Uh, but, you know, and, and I think they want to close with that momentum. So, uh, Noobs, how say you? Any thoughts here, Rockets, Jazz? Yeah, no reason for the Rockets to lose. They don't have their first round draft pick. That it belongs to the Oklahoma City Thunder as part of the Chris Paul Russell Westbrook trade from years past that I'm sure we all remember very fondly. Um, they've got the Nets pick. So doesn't really matter to Houston whether they win or lose. I, I agree. MAO Doka's got a young team. I bet he wants to finish with a winning record. Guys, we just got to win three games here. They're all very winnable games. Uh, let's try to do that. Let's get a winning record here for the first time in Houston in a very, yeah. very long time, by the way. Uh, the Jazz, they are going the other way. I love this injury report. I like when teams are just, we're out. Jordan Clarkson, John Collins, Chris Dunn, <laughs> Walker Kessler, Laurie Markin, and Colin Sexton, or better known as the six best players on the Utah Jazz. Um, are all out tonight. So again, like, what do we do here? The Houston Rockets, who are just playing for pride, I guess, on the road. This is a team that they almost lost to last time they played um, Friday, March 29th, a couple weeks ago, when the Rockets were still pushing to try to get that 10 seed again. Utah, without most of these guys, I think just Colin Sexton and John Collins were on the floor that night, almost beats them. So just no idea what to do with this game. I think it's Rockets or pass. I'm happy to pass. I mean, you even look at that team total. It's 119 and a half against a horrible Utah team that likes to push pace. They should score 125 points, but they haven't done it in two weeks, uh, except for the overtime game against Dallas. In four quarter games, they haven't been close to 120 points, really. So I just, everything I look, every day, idea I have, I think about it immediately sounds terrible. Let's pass. Fair enough. Uh, Lying up for me officially on the Rockets, laying 10 and a half. Uh, yeah, got it last night, a little shorter, but still, I, I think they roll here. So let's go Rockets. Next up, we got probably the game of the night. Uh, actually, I would say, I don't even need to say probably, definitely. 100%. It's, the only uh, game you should watch. Yeah. The only game where uh, both teams are motivated to win, both teams in the playoffs here Pelicans versus the Kings. Pelicans catching a point here versus the Sacramento Kings. I mean, I looked at this game for a while and. Every time I figured out a good reason to bet the Pelicans, I would then counter it with a good reason to take the Kings. I, I feel like I've struggled um, personally figuring out each of these teams at times. The Pelicans have struggled with good teams. Um, you know, Kings uh, coming off a, a tough loss against the Thunder. They're back home. Both teams really need this game. They're both motivated. Um, you know, Pelicans, I, I have, have, have owned the, uh, head to head matchup. I'm pretty sure. So it seemed like every, every point I looked up, it would be like, Oh, good reason for the Pelicans. Good reason for the Kings. Uh, ultimately just settle on good reason not to have an official play here, but shark how say you Pelicans Kings. This is difficult. As you said, a lot, a lot of merge in this game. And, you know, Sean, you just mentioned it. Both teams here coming off the non cover, uh, new Orleans did not cover their previous game at Portland. And, of course, um, Sacramento coming off a really egregious loss in Oklahoma City. Had a huge lead, gave it away in the second half. So you get the buy low off both and a low. Both are on front end back-to-backs. Both have been great on front end back-to-backs. New Orleans is 8-4 and four ATS in the front end. And, Sa and uh, Sacramento is 10-4 and four ATS front end back-to-back. -back. And as you mentioned, New Orleans here, fifth matchup of the year, very similar to the Boston situation with New York. They are 4-0 and ATS and straight up this year. And the reason why I have New York is because Boston's not going to care. New Orleans will care. They need this game. They're sitting yeah. in the sixth seed, only a half game up on Phoenix. They don't want to drop to the play-in tournament. And truly, I think this is a stylistic thing. I think that Sacramento doesn't match up well with this team. I think Zion's too big, too strong, too fast. 
I think he can neutralize Sabonis on the offensive end. Sabonis not a great offensive player. And um, I think when you see this type of domination, I don't think it's going to go the other direction. I really don't. I think Sacramento peaked last year with this roster, obviously uh, hosting the dubs in the first round. They've kind of fallen off a little bit this year to fall to the eighth seed. Obviously, there's a ton of parity in this in this conference, so it's not really that poor to be eight. But I think this is probably a New Orleans spot, if I had to be honest with you. Uh, and the number is agreeing with it. The last matchup on January 7th in Sacramento, uh, Sacramento was laying four and a half at home, and they got crushed by 33, again, without Zion. Now they're moving it down. Usually when books think that Sacramento has maintained strength in their home gym, they won't move the line against the previous game. The books like New Orleans uh, to continue this domination tonight. If I had to play it here at 10 o'clock, I would lean towards New Orleans. Yeah, I mean it's tough, but then it's like, man, Kings Kings feel like they got to get one of these, right? But it, but you're laying out a good a good case to the Pelicans. Uh, should be a good game at the very least. Noobs, how say you? Any anything to add here, Pelicans Kings? Uh, this is the game that I was annoyed. The books have lined this perfectly. Yeah. I, I think this is going to be a great matchup. I see some love for the under in the chat. My only concern there is the Pelicans have adjusted the way they play over the last couple of weeks, and you have to look at Jonas Valanciunas and his minutes. Willie Green has been more willing to pull him off the floor against smaller faster teams like this where he has struggled. We saw it against Phoenix, played only four minutes on Sunday in Phoenix, 11 minutes against Oklahoma City about a week ago, just 15 against Boston. Uh, again, this is a matchup where Valentinus is not going to be able to stay on the floor. He cannot stay with Sabonis offensively as good as he is in the post. I think we'll see less Valentinus, which means more Larry Nance, which means a little bit of a faster pace here in Sacramento, especially at home, likes to run. So I, I get everyone's kind of logic here. It's been a bit under full. Um, New Orleans has done a good job defensively against the Sacramento team. They do. They have great defenders. Trey Murphy, yeah. Herbert Jones, Jose Alvarado's back, but my concern is, again, the pace might be a little out of hand here. I do wonder, though, at the same time, what I would look at is if you're thinking under here, watch the game. Watch the game. See how it goes. If the pace is fast in the first half, wait till the second half and then look for an under there. If this game is close going to the second half, I think we'll see kind of a playoff-style game where things will get real slow, teams will start grinding out possessions, and we'll see the pace drop late. So I think that would be my plan for the under again the full game everything looks right to me i lean towards new orleans because uh, this game is wildly important for both teams though sacramento if they lose this game they're in um danger of not just staying in the play-in tournament but having to win two games falling into that 9 10 spot whereas new orleans kind of has to win this game to stay above phoenix there for six so should be a lot of fun the only angle i have here though trey murphy been picking up his usage, is now locked in as a starter next to C.J. McCollum, been putting up a lot more shots, playing more and more minutes. His point total sits at only 15 and a half. I had this closer to 18, so give me Trey Murphy over 15 and a half points. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Trey Murphy over 15 and a half points officially there for Noops. Lock it up for him. Uh, yeah, and then moving over to the last game of the slate. And again, feel free to get the questions in. We'll give you our best answers. Uh, last game, we got the Golden State Warriors lane 13 and a half. Uh, Portland plus 650 on the money line, total sitting at 222 and a half. Portland, uh, again, also been kind of uh, punting here a little bit. And the Warriors are road warriors. Uh, let's go. I'll lay the 13 and a half. Is it kind of crazy? Yeah, but. Warriors are in that 10 spot. They don't want to be at home or sorry. They don't want to go on the road to LA uh, against the Lakers. They want to play that game at home. And I think that's a pretty big motivation for this team who has closed it out strong, uh, had a strong second half, 27, 13 against the spread on the road in general, 15 and five ATS as road favorites. So they're not afraid to beat up on teams when they should. Um, you know, maybe they're peaking a little bit too early as far as when it comes to the, the run of the playoffs here, like, um, we'll see, but they are playing probably their best basketball of the season. This kind of this little bit of a stretch here, six, three and one ATS last 10, nine and one straight up. I was thinking maybe taking warriors first half, but they haven't been a, a great uh, team in the first half. I'm optimistic. They're going to close it out. Certainly they have another game. This is the first end of a back-to-back. -back, so you're, you're always worried about a late backdoor, but I don't know. I'm not seeing much fight from this blazer squad right now. So uh, yeah, chalky, but give me the warriors laying the big number on the road here. Shark how say you. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree. Uh, the only counterpoint, as you mentioned, this is a front end back-to-back. -back. They do have a big game tomorrow night against new Orleans. So there is a bit of a, maybe take your foot off the gas element here. 
Um, but, you know, as you mentioned, this is just a must win without question. And I think the line is suggesting emphasis. Uh, the previous game at home, they were laying 10 and a half. Uh, this should move towards Portland uh, up here in Portland. It's not. It's moving towards the Warriors. Uh, based on conventional numerical analysis that I look at, this is supposed to be Golden State by 21 points on the average. And, uh, you know, Sacramento has to play tonight against New Orleans, and they get Phoenix tomorrow on a back-to-back. If the Dubs can win tonight and tomorrow, they could get the eight seed. So, yep. I mean, this is, like, really, really important. And, you know, they really are coming together back into the season here. Eight and one straight up last nine. As you mentioned, great on the road all year. I have uh, 27 and 13 ATS on the road. Of course, you know, these statistics are a little bit different for closing line and opening line, et cetera. But great road team, strong line, need the game. Portland's really not showing much here. Again, my only fear is just maybe a little look ahead late. Uh, you saw that against Utah at home the other night. Uh, they were up, uh, I believe, 118 to nine, uh, 116 to 97, and Utah closed on like an 11 to 2 run to cover. Could see the back door. Dubs would be the spot. Let's dominate. Yeah, how say you? How say you, noobs? Uh, the Warriors ended up winning 118, 110, but yeah, Jazz did sneak in that back door. Uh, you think? The, you think the Warriors get it done? Any thoughts on the Blazers? What, what do we? What do we like here? Just worried I'm repeating myself too much. Good Lord, I have no idea what's going to happen in this game. Golden State <laughs> has to win this game if they have a chance. Again, not only just to make it up to nine, but if Sacramento loses tonight, they yeah. win. Now all of a sudden they have a chance to get up to eight, which means they only have to win one game in the play-in tournament instead of two. Uh, just so much to play for here for them. But at the same time, this is just a huge, huge, huge number for a veteran team that has been happy just kind of winning games, if not necessarily by margin. Again, beat uh, you know a skeleton jack squad on Sunday by just eight points. Uh, I, they've got to play again tomorrow against New Orleans, a better opponent. Steve Kerr has not been someone who's necessarily rested stars, but we've seen their minutes be a lot less, especially in the second half of game. So uh, that's just my concern. Golden State wins this game comfortably, but is not able to cover a big number as they sort of slow down late and let a young team in Portland that has actually been pushing pretty hard. These guys all know what they're kind of playing for next year can somehow sneak into the back door. So it's just too much unknown for me here. I think Golden State definitely wins, but I'm definitely not playing that money line and I'm not interested in laying that many points. So pass. Not a uh, minus 1000 money line better. Uh, noops. Like if you parlayed that with Houston, what does that get you to minus four hundred? Like just and don't do that. By the way, I should yeah. have said that out loud. Don't do that. No, yeah, I, unless you, <laughs> yeah, unless you have like an insane bank. Even then, <clears throat> even then, oh. uh, I, I still don't. I also, I don't just care how much money you have. Yeah, have it's supposed to be fun too. Like parlaying big money line favorites. All you're doing is just giving yourselves opportunities to be screwed. And, and we've seen some wonky results here. Uh, these last couple uh, end of the weeks there shark already looking ahead uh, and good time to mention it. We're going to, there are no games on Monday, but we will be doing a special like futures episode. Uh, myself, shark and noobs, like talking about some futures we like for the playoffs. Uh, maybe some, have some playoff series odds too. I think three, yeah. six and four five should be up by then. Yeah. A little uh, playoff series odds. Yeah. Um, you know, a little futures action. So uh, that's going to be a fun episode. So uh, I know everyone locked in already, but Monday morning, uh, that's when that will be dropping. Uh, Shark, before we move on here, though, I, I kind of alluded that maybe Warriors peaking too early. What do you think about this Warriors team coming into the playoffs? I don't think they're peaking too early. I mean, I think this is right where you want to be, actually. Because, yeah. you know, we talked about this after their assistant coach passed. It was kind of like a little reprieve for them like a reset. They were off for like a week and then they came back very well. And, you know, this is just this ongoing conversation, which will never stop until the league makes the regular season shorter. But 82 games is a gauntlet, you know, and these teams are older now and you can't really gauge a team like this in the first 50 games because they're saving their energy both mentally and physically and you're going to start to see who they really are in the last 20 games. And again, I said it to myself just to reiterate how insane that is, that they kind of coast for three quarters of the season. And then there's an entirely new team that you see. Lakers are doing it. Dubs are doing it. Other teams are doing yeah. it. And then I think as a secondary point to that, when we go to the playoffs, what do they have another level? Like, is this going to be one of those playoffs where all of a sudden, you know, OKC bows out in the first round to the Lakers? 
or the Doves. I mean, like, there's gonna there could be some historical sad. stuff going on here because the game changes so much in the playoffs. And again, I think these older teams have reserved so much energy for a different version of themselves contemporarily and going forward. So, Sean, great question. I think we're going to touch on that on Monday. The playoffs are going to be very fascinating. I will say that. Yeah, no, wide open uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, looking forward to it. Going to be some very fun, interesting matchups. A lot of like old guard versus the new guard uh, scenarios possibly lining up. So chomping at the bit to talk playoff basketball, but I digress uh, for this game in particular, lock it up for me, golden State laying the two touchdowns. Uh, well, almost minus 13 and a half there, just under the two tutties. Uh, closing it out with the question and answer section. Appreciate all the questions. Uh, Damien, chat legend himself. Shout out to you, Damien. I think Damien also was on the um, Conley uh, over 10 and a half points, if I remember correctly. Uh, he wants to know Josh Hart over 25 and a half PRA. I'm sure he will see heavy minutes tonight, win, lose, or blowout. Yeah, I, I, tough to argue with that angle. Um, Noobs, how say you on Josh Hart tonight? Hey, I have him just over. I've got him at about 27, 27 and a half almost. Uh, basically right on his points over a 10 and a half. Um, a rebound above his number. I've got him at 10.6. And then his assist is five and a half. I have that at six. Again, wrap that all together. You're about 27.3, 27.4. I don't feel like doing math that exact right now. But yeah, I lean towards the over there. And as always, with these Knicks guys, you just have to play overs. You can't play any unders because he might just play 48 minutes for no reason. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you have the minutes angle uh, behind you with the Knicks guys, you got to love that. So I'm with you, Josh Hart over 25 and a half PRA uh, shark. You're on the Knicks tonight. Uh, how say you on Josh Hart? Any thoughts on his matchup? Yeah, I like this. I like this. Uh, you know, I was talking about this. I like to see a discrepancy between the season average and the line he's averaging 21.5 <clears throat> PRA. So this is a huge gap to get to four. And again, theoretically, Boston's very competitive. They play reasonable defense at home at the TD Garden. This is definitely a buy spot. I think Damian's usually on the right side. I think he's on the right side here. And what Noob said, you know, the Knicks are going to put their guys on the floor for a lot of minutes tonight. And uh, Josh Hart really has that dog in him. I saw Nate Robinson in a quote saying Boston does not have the dog in them. Uh -oh. Well, confirmed, Josh Hart has the dog in him. He will be balling tonight. Take the over. I think this probably cashes. Uh, Paris Taylor in the chat, Jalen Brunson, uh, keeping it with the Knicks here over two and a half threes made uh, noobs. I know, I think in our, it may have been in our group chat where you were talking about how you're, hey, you've, you've sworn off uh, over under on three point uh, bets because of the variance, but any thoughts on Jalen Brunson tonight over two and a half threes. Yeah, I feel pretty good about my points, rebounds, and assist number. The three-point number, it's I need to find a better way to project some of these attempts. It seems like every time I'm off, I you know, I have somebody under, they shoot 10 threes instead of the six or seven they normally shoot. Every time I have them over, they shoot four instead of the seven or eight they shoot. So Jalen Brunson, I do. I've got him just under three three-pointers here uh, at two point uh, at three. His number is two and a half. Um, let me just double check. I would make that over two and a half minus 135. So uh, again, that's kind of tough. And I think there was another Jalen Brunson question. Somebody asked me about his points. Um, Jalen Brunson's points are right now 30 and a half. I've got him at 31 and a half. So again, a slight lean over and as always just play Knicks players over. Uh, they're just going to play as many minutes as Thibodeau can, can get out of them. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you there. I mean, he'll get, I think he might get some open threes here, uh, but I, I guess the only thing maybe concerning he is coming off a, a game where he shot seven to 12. Uh, almost a season high. He's had seven, one other time, and then an eight and a nine point uh, three game uh, or threes made. So certainly on the higher end of the spectrum, uh, if you're worried about any sort of regression there, but again, he's a pretty good shooter and I think he'll, he'll get some shots here. Two and a half feels, feels doable for Brunson. Shark have say you. Yeah, I don't mind it. I, I was just looking at that myself and see seven for 12 at Chicago. And my first thought was, that could be hard to repeat, but I'm looking back here. A couple recent spots, March 16th at Sacramento, he went five for 10, and then he came back the next game and went three for nine. So he he wasn't shy about shooting the next game. Yeah. He did make over two and a half. And then another sequence here at Sac or at San Antonio, five for 13, came back the next game, four for 11. So it seems like if he shoots well the first one game, 
he comes back believing in himself and he shoots a lot. So you're going to get the attempts, I think, tonight for sure. And I think that would probably lean you to at least three. Yeah, three feels pretty doable here. Uh, Mandrake Falls wants to know thoughts on the over under Pell's Kings. I, I feel like we kind of hit on that a little bit already, uh, talking about uh, the under there uh, and and uh, Noops's thoughts. Uh, what about you, Shark? Any thoughts on Pell's Kings, uh, the total there? I didn't see the number. What was the number on that one? Let me confirm uh, that uh, Pelicans K 216. 216, yes. I think that's definitely an under. When you look at these totals this year, last two, 127, 117, and 133, 100. Uh, they're telling you a defensive game. You see how New Orleans has been playing great defense uh, in recent history. The game at Phoenix being a good example of that, 113, 105. Of course, I did go over 216 and a half, but this is definitely an under line tonight for sure. Uh, what about the other one here? Mandrake is asking about. Uh, I I call him Mandrake like that's an actual for that's just, like that's an actual human's name. Uh, Knicks Celtics. I'll give that one uh, to you, Noobs. Any thoughts on the total there? Uh, Bet US has it at two fourteen and a half. Uh, gut instinct would have me leaning towards the under, but how say you? Tell me who's playing first. I don't know. Yeah. If the Celtics play everybody, this could go over. If they don't want to play anybody, it could go under. Uh, literally anything is possible to be in that game. Yeah, no, fair enough. <laughs> I would, I would, I would, I'm guessing they're going to be a lot of those day to day guys are probably going to sit, uh, which would have me, I think, leaning towards the under here. So, uh, Shark, any thoughts for you on Nick Celtics? Not much on the total. Uh, I think it's probably pretty sharp. And as Noob said, we don't know who's playing. And, you know, sometimes when they play these second unit guys, they just shoot threes, which is another, you know, point of volatility with, you know, if they shoot 50 threes or something. So I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I think this is probably a tight line. It's a low line uh, compared to some of these other games that were played, but it's just tough, real tight. Yes. Uh, last question Maurice Walker hurt over rebounds and assists at 14 and a half. I'm guessing, is he talking about Hart, Josh Hart? What, what do you, what player is he referring to here? Noobs, do you, what am I missing here? There is a guy named Hurt. I can't remember yeah. if he plays for the Trailblazers or not. I think he's but on based the, on he's that the, number, Mr. Hurt is probably not projected to have 14 and a half rebounds uh, and assists. So yeah, let me pull that up again. I've got Hart at 10 rebounds, 10.6 actually. So that's over his number. I've got him at six assists. So yeah, 16 and a half basically is what my number is there. It's 14 and a half. As always, just play next players overs. Don't play unders. Yeah. Um, I would say even uh Josh Hart. I, I kind of like the PRA better than the rebounds and assists. Uh, just because I feel like Hart's going to have a good game, going to get a lot of minutes. You don't know necessarily what it's going to be locked into, so why not take the PRA? Uh, but I, I, I'm with you. The rebounds and assists should be good as well. Shark, any thoughts on Hart? Just rebounds and assists. I think it's an over, and uh, yeah, we're not sure if Hurts a player. We'll assume Hart. <laughs> I, I think probably the over. Uh, I think, as I mentioned, this is coming north from his season stats. He'll get a lot of usage tonight. Knicks will compete. So definitely take the over on this one. Yeah, uh, there is a Matthew Hurt, I think, on the Grizzlies. but hasn't There played. is. <laughs> well, he's technically on the Memphis hustle, but that basically oh, makes right. you a Grizzly this year. <laughs> uh, yeah, G League superstar there. All right, closing it out with our best bets. Big thanks to the chat. Big thanks to everyone tuning in, tossing the thumbs up, smashing that subscribe button. Uh, and spread the word. Always appreciate the retweets, the, uh, you know, passing along to friend, family member, whoever you, uh, you know, playoffs are a great time to spread the gospel of the bet us NBA pick show. We got shark on the, uh, Knicks money line tonight against Celts. I'm a, uh, you know, big chalk over here. Rockets minus 10 and a half Warriors minus 13 and a half two double digit favorites on the road. What could go wrong? Uh, Noops likes the Bulls Pistons, uh, or sorry, likes Caruso over a uh, 19 and a half PRA in that game. Uh, he also likes DeRozan over nine and a half rebounds and assists and Murphy, the third over 15 and a half points in the Pelicans game. All right, gents. A uh, great time as always looking forward to the future show on Monday, looking forward to the Friday show, uh, as well. Shark always great chopping it up. Where can people check you? 
Yeah, Sharks and Sports 88 on X Twitter, Shark, Sharky Waters Nation on YouTube. Look at a card tomorrow. We mentioned this last Friday. Well, here we are going into it. We got every team in the league playing tomorrow, I believe. So huge card. And for some reason, they're off on Saturday, and then they all play on Sunday again. I'm not entirely sure why, um, but that's the way it is. We got a ton of games. I'll be going into it this afternoon. We'll see what we got. Big matchups. Can't wait to get in there. Noob's a pleasure as always, Sean. A pleasure. Close them out. Let's dominate. Yes, Fridays are for freedom, so stay t- to tune in. Uh, we are going to be celebrating the freedom of uh, closing out the regular season. And, uh, yeah, massive slate. We'll see what pops up for us. Uh, always going to be answering the chat questions as well. Uh, noobs, hats off to you. Uh, where can people check you? To be honest, I'm generally jealous when you guys are on the show and I'm not on the show. I would come on the show probably just every day, but I do not (laughs) want to be on the show tomorrow. There's 15 games. Everybody plays and they give everybody a day off so everybody can play again on Sunday. Uh, I guess the NBA, for some reason, thinks like this is all going to be very interesting and it is not. Um, It's just going to be a mess. So, again, be careful, everybody. It's been a lot of fun, but I'll see you in the postseason. Yeah, postseason is uh, now when we get a switch of gear. I'm sure we'll find a couple couple little spots uh, that we really like, but I do worry there's going to be, well, you know, we'll see who wants to play here. And, uh, but again, that's part of the fun of the NBA, the association, uh, as always, you can check me out at Sean T green. Uh, you can check out my other podcast, sports gambling podcast. If you're a UFL, uh, or fan, or just a degenerate gambler who wants some UFL action. I've been on an insane run, 13, two and one sides and totals in the UFL. Uh, Hey, it's football. So it's fun. Have a little action on that. And uh, yeah, looking forward to checking in with you. Uh, The chat and my fellow co-host tomorrow, noon Pacific, 9 a.m. East on the bet us NBA pick show for shark for noobs. I'm Sean second, the money green, let it ride. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. So you never miss a show for all our sports content. Hit to betustv.com. Best of luck with all your bets.